you kind of uh, are discarding or critical of the approach of the archaeologist approach, looking, searching for a treasure, or the Columbo approach, mm. solving a mystery, the last piece of a jigsaw puzzle. Right. If those aren't the metaphors you use for therapy, how would you conceptualize your work? Yeah, you're, you're mentioning sort of Freud's notion of the therapist as archaeologist, and what we want to do is keep gently using our archaeologist's brush to scrape away everything. We get back to the original source of things, and we understand then how everything else fits together. But I, I don't really think that ever happens. You know, I, I'm much more concerned about the the idea that the relationship is what heals, and I want to do whatever we can to work on our relationship. Uh, and to, you know, for example, let me just think about a patient I just saw quite recently. It's always easiest for me to talk about people who come fresh to mind, but this is a patient who uh, hadn't paid his bill. So, you know, he's perhaps a month late and hadn't paid the bill, and he keep telling me, well, he had forgotten to do it, forgotten to do it. And this was a, uh, a new patient. What I had in mind was the fact that this was a, this was a man who often had a great deal of interpersonal issues. He was in conflict with everyone, with his landlord and with his boss and with the people who worked for him as well. And there was a great deal of tension and stress in his life. So I was trying to take a look at um, about the bill paying and what this meant to him. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, well, I, I really like the way our therapy is going, you know, and uh, everything about it is quite right. And I'm saying, well, you know, there is, there's some part of you that doesn't seem to want to pay me. And I wonder if could we look at that part of you. Uh, maybe there's a 97% satisfaction, but let's take a look at that 3% and what is it saying. And so then he would say, well, you know, that, well, you know, he wishes I had said more about such and such last time or brought up some sort of issue. So I'll focus on it in that way. Another way I use that material was to ask him the question of how do you think it makes me feel? Uh, for you not to be paying me. What's your sense about that? And he was sort of shocked at that. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, I guess you probably are a little uh, irritated at that. And I said, yeah, I thought that was right. It, it does cause me more difficulty when I bill you for the following month. I got to try and figure out whether you paid for the previous month. So you say you really like me. You say you really like coming here. So w tell me, what is the payoff for you? In, uh, in irritating me. What do you get out of that? And so that's, so we begin mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. try to work in that way because I think this man has a good deal of difficulty uh, with empathy without, with, he doesn't put himself in the experience of other people. And for example, he often feels that uh, people don't treat him well, that if he goes into a restaurant, the, uh, he never gets a good table there. Uh, that uh, <laughs> this is the way that people are. And I was trying to make him see, well, all these interactions are really two-person interactions. There's something that you're doing that cues off the way the other person deals and treats uh, and treats you. So that would be this. That would be a good a good example, perhaps, of focusing on something that's going on between the two of us. Mm -hmm.